Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. Thank you for this wonderful welcome. Thank you to the people of Jakarta and thank you to the people of Indonesia. Pulang kampung ni. I am so glad uh, that I made it back to Indonesia and that Michelle was able to join me. Uh, we had a couple of false starts this year, but I was determined to visit a country that's meant so much to me. Uh, and unfortunately, this visit is too short, uh, but I look forward to coming back a year from now when Indonesia hosts the East Asia Summit. Before uh, I go any further, uh, I want to say that our thoughts and prayers are with all of those Indonesians who are affected by the recent tsunami and the vol volcanic eruptions, particularly those who've lost loved ones and those who've been displaced. And I want you all to know that, as always, the United States stands with Indonesia in responding to natural disasters, and we are pleased to be able to help as needed. As neighbors help neighbors and families take in the displaced, I know that the strength and the resilience of the Indonesian people will pull you through once more. Now, let me begin with a simple statement. Indonesia bagian dari diri saya. I first came to this country uh, when my mother married an Indonesian uh, named Lolo Sutoro. And as a young boy, I was <laughs> as a young boy, I was coming to a different world. But the people of Indonesia quickly made me feel at home. Jakarta now Jakarta looked very different in those days. The city was filled with buildings that were no more than a few stories tall. This, back in 1967, 68, most of you weren't born yet. The Hotel Indonesia was one of the few high rises, and there was just one big department store called Sarina. That was it. Bechaks and Bemos, that's how you got around. They outnumbered automobiles in those days. And you didn't have all the big highways that you have today. Most of them gave way to unpaved roads uh, and the kampongs. So we moved to Menteng Dalam, where, hey, some folks from Menteng Dalam right here. And we lived in a small house. Uh, we had a mango tree out front. And I learned to love Indonesia while flying kites and running along the paddy fields and catching dragonflies, buying sate and bakso from the street vendors. I still remember the call of the vendors. Sate! Yeah. I remember that. Bakso! Enak, yeah? But most of all, I remember the people. The old men and women who welcomed us with smiles, and the children who made uh, a foreign child feel like a neighbor and a friend, and the teachers who helped me learn uh, about this country. Because Indonesia is made up of thousands of islands and hundreds of languages, and people from scores of regions and ethnic groups. My time here helped me appreciate the common humanity of all people. And while my stepfather, like most Indonesians, was raised a Muslim, he firmly believed that all religions were worthy of respect. And in this way, in this way, he reflected the spirit of religious tolerance 
that is enshrined in Indonesia's constitution and that remains one of this country's defining and inspiring characteristics. Now, I stayed here for four years, a time that helped shape my childhood, a time that saw the birth of my wonderful sister, Maya, a time that made such an impression on my mother that she kept returning to Indonesia over the next 20 years to live and to work and to travel and to pursue her passion of promoting opportunity in Indonesia's villages, especially opportunity for women and for girls. And I was so honored. I was so honored when President Yudo Yono uh, last night at the state dinner presented an award uh, on behalf of my mother, uh, recognizing the work that she did. And, and she would have been so proud because uh, my mother held Indonesia and its people very close to her heart for her entire life. Now, so much has changed in the four decades since I boarded a plane to move back to Hawaii. If you ask me uh, or any of my schoolmates who knew me back then, I don't think any of us could have anticipated that one day I would come back to Jakarta as the President of the United States. And, and few could have anticipated the remarkable story of Indonesia over these last four decades. The Jakarta that I once knew has grown into a teeming city of nearly 10 million with skyscrapers that dwarf the Hotel Indonesia and thriving centers of culture and of commerce. While my Indonesian friends and I used to run in fields with water buffalo and goats, a new generation of Indonesians is among the most wired in the world, connected through cell phones and social networks. And while Indonesia, as a young nation, focused inward, a growing Indonesia now plays a key role in the Asia-Pacific and in the global economy. Now this change also extends to politics. When my stepfather was a boy, he watched his own father and older brother leave home to fight and die in the struggle for Indonesian independence. And I'm happy to be here on Heroes Day to honor the memory of so many Indonesians who have sacrificed on behalf of this great country. When I moved to Jakarta, it was 1960.